OK, thank you. We're at the development control meeting of the 14th of May 2020. Uh, meeting participants, committee members present, Councillor Alan Hosker, Chair, Councillor Mark Payne, Vice Chair, Councillor Afra Siab Anwar, Councillor Gordon Bertwistle, Councillor Frank Kant, Councillor Saeed Chowdhury, Councillor Ivor Emo, Councillor Andy Fewings, Councillor Sue Graham, Councillor John Harbour, Councillor Marcus Johnston, Councillor Gordon Leishman, Councillor Asif Raja, and Councillor Jeff Sumner. Supporting officers, Paul Gattrell, Head of Housing and Development Control, Alec Hickey, Planning Manager, Janet Philbin, Senior Planner, David Talbot, Senior Solicitor, Imelda Grady, Democracy Officer, and Alison McEwen, Democracy Officer, acting as meeting host and technical support and live stream. We've also got an observer, Emma Barker, from the legal team. Thank you, Chair. It's over to you. Thank you. Good evening, Councillors. Good evening, Chair. Good evening, Chair. Can we start off with your apologies, Alison, please? Um, it's, Imel it's Imelda. Oh, sorry, Imelda. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Thank you, Chair. I've had no apologies, but I do know Neil Motter's head and uh, Councillor Mohamed Ishtiak isn't here, so I will note their apologies if they don't uh, turn up to this meeting. OK. Minutes of last meeting. Would somebody move those minutes, please? Move them, Chair. Second Seconded. Thank Seconded. You. Thank you. Additional business. There are none, Chair. Decorations of interest. There doesn't seem to be any chair. Thank you. Okay. Excursions of the public. And that's as per agenda. Okay. List of deposits and plans and applications. So is this taking this at first one? Is it Amelda? It is, yes, your first item. Right, this is uh, Victoria Harris. There are no House. speakers, Chair. This, this is what, uh, Melbourne, no speakers? There are no speakers, no. Thank you. And so we'll start off with Victoria House and Royal House Island, please. Would the officer present their report? Yeah, Janet's going to be uh, presenting this one. Okay, thank you. Janet, would you like to present your report? Uh, my name is Janet Philbin, uh, and I've got a, a written presentation for you for the application COU 2019-0571, which is at Victory House, Lane House Lane. The site is located across a wide frontage to Lower House Lane within a built up mainly residential area between Burnley and Paddyham and close to Lower House Ticket Club. The red edge of the application site, which you can see on page 17, shows that the application premises adjoin a larger building to the rear, which is separate owned and is used by a different business. Victory House can be seen on page 19 and is an attractive stone building, originally a Victorian schoolhouse, but in more recent times has been used for business and industrial purposes. The last planning permission granted on the site was in 1989. And this was a change of use from an existing warehouse, offices and retail to a light industrial class B1 use with associated warehousing, offices and retail. The current application involves no external changes to the building. The existing and proposed floor plans are shown on page 19. The proposed uses are a training centre, class D1, offices, class B1, and an aesthetics clinic, which is a sui generis use, which is basically 
for non-surgical cosmetic treatments. All these uses would operate in association with each other and with an ancillary warehouse. The uses are described in more detail on page 20 of the agenda report. Policy SP4 of Burnley's local plan supports development where it is of an appropriate type and scale and where it makes efficient use of land and buildings, is accessible by public transport, walking or cycling and does not unacceptably affect residential amenities. Policy EMP3 supports the expansion and upgrading or establishment of new business premises where proposals comply with other planned policies and do not unacceptably affect vehicle access arrangements, residential amenity or the lands landscape or townscape. The proposal would have some similarities with the existing authorised use of the premises and would continue to provide employment on a small scale basis. As such, there is no objection in principle to the proposed change of use. The main issues to consider relate to the impacts on parking and residential amenity. A summary of five letters of, of objection from neighbouring properties is found on page 21. The main concerns of neighbours relate to an increase in traffic and parking, the safety of existing access and proximity of residential properties. Firstly, in terms of traffic access and parking, the site is accessible by bus and close to bus stops on Low House Lane and also accessible by walking and cycling. The proposed site plan on page 20 shows the existing shared access into the site from Hollyoak Street and a direct access to the forecourt and garage from Low House Lane. LCC Highways has not indicated any concerns over the use of the existing access points or junctions. The proposed site plan on page 20 shows nine car parking spaces across the front and one side of the premises. The amount of car parking is less than the car parking standards in Burnley's local plan, although in this case the type of uses do not cleanly fit into the standard categories, which makes it more relevant to examine in this case the types of uses um, concerning uh, that will generate in terms that will affect the number of people coming to the premises in terms of working and visiting. The total number would be between 15 and 22 persons per day. The lower number occurring on days and some whole weeks when no training courses would be running. LCC highways raise no objection and it is considered that nine car parking spaces is sufficiently sufficient considering the existing employment use of the premise, the close proximity to bus services, accessibility for pedestrians and cyclists, and the availability of on-street parking close to the site. In respect of the impact on residential amenity, the existing authorised light industrial use would be removed whilst the proposed training centre, offices and aesthetics clinic are likely to generate only low levels of activity and associated noise. Operating essentially weekday office hours, with the exception of a small number of later evenings and Saturdays in the case of the aesthetics clinic. The council's environmental health officer has no objections. In conclusion, the proposal has some similarities with the existing authorised use of the premises and would provide an acceptable reuse of the building. The application is therefore recommended for approval subject to six conditions listed on pages 23 and 24 of the agenda report. Thank you, Chair. Okay, thank you. Thank Any you. Member?
Chair, Councillor Kant wishes to speak. Thank you. Councillor Kant. If you could just unmute yourself, Councillor Kant. And then Councillor Sorry. Johnston wishes to speak after that. Right. Sorry, I didn't realise I was on mute. Um, yeah, I've been up in the area a few times and had a look round. And uh, it seems to me that there are uh, a, a lot of parking spaces available around that site. And I would have thought that Hollyhawk Street and Thornhill Street, if I was to drive up there, they may not be my first choices of places to park because there seems to be plenty of parking available on uh, Lower House Lane and uh, it is quite wide at that point uh, of, of the building. So I don't, I, I, with uh, um, uh, the highways in the respect that I don't think there'd be a problem pe people pulling out at that junction. Uh, because it is such a wide road and uh, uh, and to be honest, I don't think it carries a great deal of traffic. It, uh, certainly not on the times when I've been. So um, I would be happy to support this, uh, this proposal and uh, uh, as such I will move it. Thank you. Marcus Johnson. Thank you, Chair. I, I'm afraid I have to disagree as the Ward Councillor with what um, Frank's just said. It really does depend on the time of day that you go at, like, go to Lower House Lane. If you go at, at lunchtime, yeah, there's no cars there because everyone's at work. But if you go at this time, and I could almost guarantee that the parking would be bumper to bumper all the way up there. Um, you know, the sort of terraced houses that, uh, that are on there. Um, they didn't design them for, every, for each house to have two cars. Um, Frank says that um, Thornhill Street and Hollyoak Street are, are good for parking. Again, if it's been raining, um, it's a quagmire. Uh, they're completely flooded. Um, and I'm sure that if those two streets are flooded, uh, people would find somewhere else to park. Um, traffic and parking is already a huge issue for, for local people in this area. I'm not in the slightest bit surprised that there have been um, objections. Um, and the final bullet points of, from the residents about poor drainage and surface water uh, flooding at the junction of Hollyoak Street and Thornhill Street is very, very relevant. I have reservations about this, Chair. I really, I really do. Um, we're told that there are nine parking spaces available, yet the expected usage um, is, is up, up to 20. Um, I don't think that that adds up, so I, I have severe reservations. Thank you. And Councillor Payne wishes to speak. Mark, go on, mate. Um, if there's nine spaces, and they were saying it's not, you know, it might have 20 people throughout a day, nine spaces may cover what's needed. LCC have no problems with the parking on this, this road, so I'll join uh, Councillor um, can't and I'll uh, second him on the on approving this. Thank you. Nick, I... oh, sorry, Chair. Councillor Kant has indicated that he would like to respond. Um, if you if you would. Yeah, I just want to say something to Marcus Johnson if I can, please. First, Marcus, in regard to the flooding issues, I've been working with the county highways on near to the entrance to the cricket field, and the recent we had done. A main drainage sorted out. Maybe that'll help you with your concerns, your flooding issues. No, Alan, it wouldn't. That's 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 about a hundred metres away. I'm I'm aware of the the flooding on the cricket field. Um, yeah. It could be the the work that's been done on the industrial estate at the the other side, and some of the properties have been have been flooded. But that really wouldn't make any material difference. Much appreciated, Mark, because I'm just bringing your attention what I had done. No, well, well yeah, but thank, thank you for mentioning it, but it, 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 it wouldn't help, I'm afraid. All right, thank you, Marcus. Go on, Frank. Yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah, just in response, really, to Marcus, um, I, see what, I, I see where he's coming from. Um, 
I've actually been out and visited that area during the lockdown period, which obviously people are at home. So uh, it may be, it may, he, he has a point when things are up and running and things are different, it, it may, may well, the situation may change. I'm only viewing it on the, uh, uh, the information that I've got and the, the, the fact that I've been up recently during during this lockdown, obviously exercising. <clears throat> um, so, but I still maintain that, uh, and I still agree that uh, we should accept this, uh, uh, you know, this application. But thanks all the same, Marcus. Okay, that one, Alison, we've got a proposal in a second, yeah? Yeah, and there are no no further speakers, Chair. Okay, okay. members. I'll uh, go to the vote. Can we go to the vote, uh, please, okay. Amelia? I'll call out the names and uh, you'll say whether you're for, against or abstain. Thank you, Chair. Um, so, Councillor Anwar? For. Thank you. Councillor Bertelsall? Councillor Bertelsall, are you muted? Councillor Bertelsall, are you up? Four, four. Thank you. Councillor Kant. Councillor Kant. Uh, four. Thank you. Councillor Chowdhury. Four. Councillor Emo. Four. Councillor Fewings. Four. Councillor Graham. Four. Councillor Harbour. Four. Councillor Hosker. Four. Councillor Johnston. Against. Councillor Lishman. Oh, Councillor Lishman, you're muted, I think. Oh, sorry, I thought I'd just done it. Yeah, four. Thank you. Councillor uh, Payne. Four. Councillor Rajar. Four. Thank you. And Councillor Sumner. Four. Thank you. The application is approved, Chair. Thank you, but I always knew it was going to be close. All right, can we go to the second application then, which is uh, 111 Thursby Road in Burnley? Oh, thanks, Chair. Yep, so the application is HOU 2019 4531. It's a uh, two story semi detached property, uh, and the application is seeking to demolish the existing carport and construct a two-storey side rear and single-storey part rear extension. Um, the applications at committee, because we've had three objections, um, with regards to the, the site itself, uh, previous applications include a, a withdrawal following officer comments and uh, mm. a further application that was um, refused um, by officers and it was uh, dismissed again at, at appeal. Uh, with regard to the current application, consultation responses, uh, we've had Lancashire County Council uh, who've not raised any objections. Um, they have raised some concerns as set out in the report about the uh, the, the neighbouring property uh, and the boundary treatment um, and also uh, suggested conditions with regards to the paving of the driveway. Uh, as you'll note in the report, there are quite a few um, objections that are submitted. Um, I won't go through through all of them, um, but they, they do cross a, a range of a range of topics, um, some more uh, pertinent than, than others. Um, and if you take note of them, uh, they're in part addressed through, throughout the report. Uh, in considering the application, there's three main areas. Uh, one is the, the design of the extension in relation to the, the dwelling and the surrounding area. The second is the impact of the extension on the adjoining properties. And then finally, um, acceptable parking provision. 
Um, as you'll see in the, uh, the accompanying um, drawings that are submitted in the report, uh, it indicates that the uh, front of the extension uh, will be set back and set down from the, uh, the host building itself uh, to make sure it's subordinate. Um, and then at the back, you have uh, a, a number of levels that have been set out to uh, try and ensure space can be achieved at the uh, first floor, uh, while also um, trying to appear subordinate um, against the adjacent properties. Um, proposed materials are stone and render for the elevations and uh, natural slate that is for um, to match the existing horse building uh, to give it a, a uniformed appearance. Um, in terms of the, the design itself, officers are, are satisfied that it, would, uh, it wouldn't dominate the main dwelling. Um, and given that the predominant mass of it is, is at the rear, it'd be acceptable with regards to the impact on the street scene. Uh, and the second element of it, the impact on, on neighbouring properties. Um, uh, you will note that the report does set out that there would be some limited impact um, on the adjacent properties. Um, by virtue of the, the siting and, and scale of the building, but none of these are thought to be detrimental where they would give uh, un, un, give rise to an unacceptable impact on loss of daylight or overbearing. Um, and therefore it's considered that the uh, the impact on residential amenity on balance would, would be acceptable. In terms of parking provision, um, it would result in the front elevation of the property um, uh, seeing additional parking put to the front as the space to the side would be lost for the extension. Uh, as noted, uh, LCC highways haven't raised an objection and therefore officers are recommending approval subject to the conditions set out. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Councillor Burt Whistle wishes to speak, Chair. Go ahead, Councillor Burt Whistle. Councillor Burt Whistle. I'm on, yeah, I'm on, you're all right. For some reason, it knocks itself off and muted. Right. <clears throat> I don't particularly agree with the officer. I think this extension is, to say the least, enormous. It is completely, in my view, out of character with the with the houses in the area. They are, in the area, there are standard semi-detached houses in the character of when they were all be built, I guess, in the 1930s. This is a, an enormous extension to this property all around front rear and and at the back uh, there is a the whole of the driveway has been taken up by the extension which has come very very close to the corner of house number 109 to get a car through there to their own garage it must be very very tight there also the the, the car parking will be provided by wiping out the front garden now those properties up there are all garden fronted semi-detached houses. This removes the garden frontage of, of, the, of this property and it becomes a car park. I, I, I am personally not happy with this. I think the development is far too big. In fact, I, do, I don't know how, how big, it, how much it extends the, increases the size of the existing house, but it must be a, must be a very large percentage increase on the existing property, so I'm not. I I don't. I don't think I will be supporting this. Uh, Councillor Anwar and Councillor Harbour would like to speak, Chair. Councillor Anwar, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, I just want to come back on um, some of the comments made by Councillor Bert Whistle. Um, I've, I've been on this committee for uh, two years now, and in, in, in that time, we've gone through numerous applications right across the borough that have been very, very similar to this one uh, in terms of, and the comments that I've always heard from uh, senior colleagues who've got much more experience than myself in, in this, is that we, what we see is that you might have an estate that might have a, 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 a family or um, an individual putting an application to ex, uh, for an extension similar to this one. And what we always find is, that, and the comments that I've heard, particularly from Mr. Uh, from Council Bertwistle in particular, is that when somebody wants to invest in a property, um, that means that they, you know, they're spending that money because they want to stick around and they like living in the in that area or in that in in our town here. And and what we should do is we should welcome that. 
Um, and I think so that's the sort of model that we should be following. So if somebody's willing to invest this money and, and they, uh, with conditions, they're willing to invest that money into this property, then, you know, we should support this application and allow them for them to, uh, for, for them to li live in this area and, um, you know, make it a family home for their, for their family. And with regards to the comments made about the, the drive, uh, the front garden being tr turned into a parking area, there are, hundreds hundreds of houses right across the you know properties right across the 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 borough that will have their front gardens that have been turned into driveways because people want somewhere uh, to park because of the vehicles that they might have so um for that reason i will i will, I will be supporting this application and, uh, and on that i'd like to move it council john arbor uh, thank you chair uh can I just say, Chair, it's not often that I agree with Council Birdwhistle, but on this occasion I do. Uh, I think when you actually look at the report, the, the report itself, in my opinion, rings alarm bells. Uh, as my colleague was just saying there, I, I've been on this planning committee now for sort of four or five years, and I've never seen an application, in my opinion, which uh, warns us about the impact on the residents. Uh, when you look on page 32, it basically says straight away that the, the extension will have some impact on neighbouring properties. Then if you move on to page 33, it talks about the proposed single storey extension, etc., should not have an upset, uh, uh, unacceptable impact. Should not. That's to say that it won't. If it said it will not have an, uh, an unacceptable impact, you could argue and say, fair enough. More worryingly, Chair, when you actually look down at the second paragraph where it talks about the impact on 100, number 109. I mean, again, in, in, in that second paragraph, it states, the kitchen window facing towards the garden will not be affected significantly, but it is being affected. Then it goes on to say uh, the two small high-level side windows will be affected to some degree by the extension. Well, what do we mean by to some degree? And then it goes on to say daylight to these windows will be slightly affected. Now, I appreciate it. does then I'm going to say, but not so much to warrant a refusal. And... But again, in my opinion, when you when you actually look at it, uh, you look at the sort of scale and massing, which appears, in my opinion, and this is where I agree with Councillor Burstwell, out of keeping with the existing dwelling, and in my opinion, the side and the rear to the property is overbearing and has an unaccessible uh, impact on neighbours, in particular, on 109. So I, I will be voting against this chair. Thank you, Councillor Harbour. Uh, Councillor Raja wishes to speak, and then I believe Councillor Burt Whistle would like to respond. Go ahead, Councillor Raja. Oh, yeah. Um, right. Um, this application, I remember this application, I think it came uh, to development control last year. And the reason why it got rejected was, again, due to the size of the building which was then obviously put back to the officers where they were going to negotiate with the um, uh, applicant to reduce the size of the extension, which I believe now that the uh, applicant has come up, well, basically compromised with the officers and reduced the size of the uh, building. Now, I'm just going to echo what Councillor Anwar has just said. Basically, this is somebody who wants to invest in the area, and I'm quite familiar with this area. Uh, I've lived around that area as well. Now, the thing is, though, there's, there's a few houses on there that have had considerable extensions done to their properties around the back. Now, in comparison, this is, this is not far off from what other properties have done in that area. Um, even if you just walk literally 10 minutes, five, five, 10 minutes just down Eastern Avenue, up onto Tasted and onto Windermere Avenue. Now, I know Councillor Harbour just mentioned the fact that it's having 
an impact on the neighbouring properties. Now, if you look at the houses on Windermere Avenue and the extensions that we approved uh, at these um, uh, meetings for them properties, them, them houses also, basically one of the points that got picked up was they were going to have impact on neighbouring properties, but still the applications got approved. Now, the thing is, though, this is no different to them applications that we've already approved in the past. So I'm, 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 I'm going to follow suit with uh, my colleague, Councillor Anwar, and I'm going to have to second this proposal. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Burt was all chair. And then... Actually, I could, 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 I, could I refer members to page 32 of the report? And if you look at the drawings at the top, the, the top left drawing shows the front elevation of this, this, this property. And there's a, a fine line just to the right of it, which is the, the adjoining house number 109. And then if you look to the top right drawing, that is a massive, massive increase in size uh, against the, the house next door. If you look at the the original, uh, what would have been the original house, that's the the roof that goes up and goes down. We've got the extension coming out of the roof itself. Then we've got the single story extension and the extension above the single story. I think this is far too big. It is. It, is, it will stand out, and it is. It is. It, the bulk of it. Is, uh, is, is far too big. And as I say, it is a, it, there, there were garden fronted properties. It is, it, the, the garden will be taken away and it will be a car, a car park. So I won't be supporting this, but I just want members to look at the top of page 32 and really appreciate the bulk of this property when the, when the property is finished. And, and, and the and the bulk related to the house adjoining it, what will stick out at the back of this house affects the adjoining semi-taxed house. So that it comes a, a long way out relating to uh, 113. So not only is 109 affected, number 113 is affected. I just think the whole thing is, is too big. I'm not against people putting extensions on and improving the properties, but this is, in my view, the bulk of this property extension is far too big. All right, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Bertersall. Uh, we, Councillor Graham and Councillor Fewings wish to speak, and then I believe the, the planning officer would like to, uh, to respond to some of those issues. Okay. Councillor Graham. Thank you, Chair. Um, I think the um, the, side, the elevation drawings on page 32 are a bit misleading um, in that they don't really show very clearly that the extension is first of all set back uh, from the front of the house, uh, particularly the first and, and roof uh, stories, and um, it looks very elongated, the side elevation. If you look at the plan on uh, page 30, uh, it's much, much clearer. Um, the actual extension um, isn't hugely uh, longer than 109 Thursby Road um, in its length. Um, I think it's been deliberately uh, configured to reduce the impact on 109 and done in such a way as that it would actually make refusal um, difficult to support uh, in any kind of appeal. So I think that the um, the applicant or the applicant's architect um, has done quite a lot to reduce the impact of this extension. And uh, I tend to agree with Councillor Anwar and, and uh, Councillor Raja. Um, it's a, an investment in a property in an area um, and there are quite a few extensions around that area, which are quite substantial as well. So I don't see any reason to refuse this application. Thank you, Chair. Councillor Fewings. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, it, it's a very similar um, response as for, we just heard from Councillor Graham. Um, I, I'm struggling to understand from the people that have concerns of this, what the planning reason is for, for 
turning this down. They haven't offered a planning reason um, for rejecting it. I think there was some comments around um, the the front garden being turned into a car park. If you look on page 28, you can see that number 113 Thursby Road, which is the adjoining property has already turned their garden into a car park and you can see clearly their car is parked in front of their um, lounge window. So I think that is something that's already happened on the street and I don't think we can say one house can do it and others can't. Now obviously from a personal perspective I wish people wouldn't tarmac over their gardens but that's not a planning reason for turning it down. The other point that has been referenced by some of my colleagues on the committee is in relation to why the application goes into detail about um, this, you know, the, the level of um, disruption for the other properties. And I think that's just directly responding to the, um, uh, re sorry, the, uh, re uh, sorry, lost my train of thought there, directly responding to the objections from the residents. Um, so uh, that is why it goes through it all, because it's it's explaining um, why on, on a planning basis um, it's not causing it's not hitting that level for rejection. So I'm 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 happy for um, other colleagues to bring forward um, some planning reasons for rejecting this, but unfortunately at the moment um, I don't think they've they've managed to bring that that forward. Um, and so I'm, unfortunately I think that we would lose on appeal if we were to turn this down. Thank you, um, Chair. Um, I know um, the planning officer wanted to, to respond. Um, we do have one more councillor that's requested to speak. So would he like to wait until after that councillor has spoken or, or make his response now? Uh, no, we'll let the councillor speak. We just had other councillors speak. It's just another one go ahead and then we'll listen to the planner. OK, thanks. It's councillor Johnston then. Yeah, th thank you, Chair. I've, I've listened very carefully to this debate. I had an open mind on it. And I think the point that Councillor Fewings has just made is, is a very good one. There are no planning grounds to turn this down. The only planning grounds are residential amenity or loss of residential amenity to the neighbouring properties. But the report makes it very clear, if you look at page 33, that on balance, the proposal is acceptable. It is a large extension. And I think uh, Councillor Fewings is right. We would lose this on appeal. Um, I think it's probably not an ideal application, but having said that, I think it's on balance, as the report says, acceptable. Uh, and I'll be voting for it. And I think if we do turn it down, we just lose it on appeal. Thank you. Can we speak, listen to the uh, officer now, please? Uh, thank you, Chair. Yeah, it was just to, to pick up really on, um, on in considering the application, we, we are minded that there uh, was a, a previous uh, appeal that was dismissed by the inspectorate. Um, and in reaching the conclusion of, of this uh, application, we, we, we have read the comments of the, the inspector who, uh, who did agree with us in, in refusing it last time. Um, and obviously, again, the same points arise with, with character and appearance uh, and impact on amenity. Um, and it is just to say, really, that in coming forward with this design now, um, you know, we believe it has uh, it has addressed those concerns, and, and that is why the officers have put forward to support it. Thank you, Chair. Um, Chair, we've got one more request to speak from Councillor Harbour. Yeah, no problem. Carry on, John Harbour. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, can I just say, Chair, that Co colleagues have talked about other examples uh, away from these properties, which is an unusual thing to talk about, really. We normally concentrate on the actual applicant itself. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but, but, but my point is that uh, if we're looking for a reason for it, I, I mean, I'm no planning expert, but I would argue HS5, where it talks about uh, extensions and alterations, yeah. And I did say in my previous uh, contribution to the meeting that, in my opinion, and I'm not saying that everybody agrees with it, that the size and scale and massing of, of the extension appears to be out of keeping with the existing dwelling, in particular the side and the rear entrance, uh, sorry, the rear extension. 
And I do think, personally, it's overbearing and it has an unacceptable impact on neighbours. And again, I will state again, Chair, that I've been on this committee now four or five years and I've never seen as many uh, points raised in the report, in any report, where it talks about impact on residents. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Harbour. Chair, the, the legal officer would like to address the meeting. Thank you. OK, um, I just want to just go into a little more detail about the previous appeal decision. Um, I know that um, your planning officer has mentioned it, um, but I have the appeal decision in front of me. It does go, it does deal with a number of the issues that have been raised this evening. Um, and I think what needs to be appreciated is the, pre the previous appeal decision was, as I understand it, based on a very similar extension to the one that's before you tonight. Although the one that's before you tonight has um, uh, is in is a reduced size. Um, the appeal decision had a the, the application related to in part to rear single story um, element of the extension that extended uh, six metres from the back elevation, whereas the current one only extends five metres. Um, as, as I say, it does have some relevance. Uh, first, first of all, um, there has been mention about the impacts of this development on the windows on number 109 um, and uh, the, the loss of light. Even given the increased size of the previous application, the inspector on, on that issue um, found that he didn't consider that uh, the occupiers would experience any unreasonable loss of outlook or loss of light, uh, even on that increased um, extension. Um, furthermore, um, the uh, in, in terms of the size of it and, and the impact on the, the neighbourhood and whether, it, whether it's fitting within that environment in which it sits, um, the inspector found on, on that larger extension that um, it nevertheless had a subservient appearance to the host dwelling. Um, and his view was that the um, development would not actually have an un unacceptable adverse effect on the character and appearance of the, of the host building and, importantly, the, the area. Um, so even on that slightly uh, bigger um, extension, the uh, in inspector um, didn't see any reason to refuse on that basis. What, what he did see um, was um, appropriate reason was that it had an overbearing um, impact, um, but that was because of the size of that particular extension. As I said, the the rear single story extended six metres rather than the current five on this one. Um, and it was, but what, what he actually said was the rear single story element of the development would project past the neighbour's conservatory and would have an overall depth of almost um, six metres. Um, he notes the presence of the boundary fence, but given the length of that element, he considers, he considers it would have a visually overbearing impact from the neighbour's conservatory. It was for that reason um, that uh, he supported the council's um, uh, refusal. So what, what committee needs to look at um, really is whether the reduction in size of, of this particular application has addressed um, those particular concerns. And the, the view expressed by your planning officer is that um, it has adequately addressed those concerns and therefore there wouldn't be a good reason for refusal. Uh, thanks, Chair. Thank you, David. Um, Chair, Councillor Anwar has requested to speak again. Go on, Councillor Anwar. Thanks, Chair. Uh, just very quickly, just wanted to just come back on a couple of points made by colleagues. The first one being that the, this extension uh, would be uh, not be in line with, in, in character with uh, other properties. Um, and as mentioned by um, 
other members that there are properties not too far from there that have had similar extensions that have been passed by this uh, committee itself. Um, and that we're looking for, are there any actual planning reasons for turning this down? Um, and it doesn't appear that there are, you know, th those, those are forthcoming and, and we should support this. But the other thing that uh, the uh, final uh, point that I wanted to make was um, around, you know, the size. I've heard in this committee itself that, you know, that when on, on an estate or on a street or on, on any road, when somebody first invests in property, it might look odd because it's you know different to all the original builds that were built on that street or on that road or on that estate but then as people start to settle and families start to move in what will happen is others will start to follow that as well and before you know it you will have numerous houses numerous properties on a on a street or, or an estate that will have um you know similar sort of extensions so um I think I think we've had a debate on this and I would like I said it's already been moved and seconded and should move to the vote. Anybody else? Yes, Chair. <clears throat> can I just ask through Chair that how I can notify that I wish to speak? Um, uh, you've just done it. You've just done it. You've just spoke for you're supposed to speak to Alison. <laughs> no, no. Alison was calling people. It's using. Colleagues. Sorry, Councillor Chowdhury. Colleagues are using the chat function um, and typing a message to say that they wish to speak. All right. I thought you just switch on your mic and you automatically know that somebody wished to speak. No, I'm sorry. Right. I think it's been moved and uh, seconded, Chair. So. A couple of points I'm going to make before we go to vote. After listening to John Harbour, Councillor Harbour, I think his, his comments make a lot of sense. And to me, it's a concern. Listening to Councillor Bertrassel, again, it's to me, it is a concern. Is it going to be a case where if we let this application go, we're going to end up with a few more? Hold on, if we got this pass and we got this pass and end up with a street full of extensions, that's another concern. David, it comes back to you. If it goes to appeal, what are the chances of, depending on what it's refused on, of a council losing? You don't know that, do you? Yeah, I can't say I can't say more really than uh, what has been said. I've drawn your attention to the various um, indications that were given on the last appeal decision, um, dealing with the various arguments that have been put forward tonight. Um, it is a judgment to be made in relation to the overbearing aspect. Um, uh, it, it, it's not something I can really comment on. It, it, it's not a cost situation, is what I could say. I don't think it's a cost situation. Right, fair enough. I'm just yeah. concerned. I'm just concerned listening to Councillor Harbour. Councillor Harbour's had a lot of experience on these committees. He's been on a long time and he will know what he's talking about. And to me, that is a concern. Go ahead. Chair, Councillor Graham has just indicated that she would like to speak. Go on, Councillor Graham. Thank you. Um, I think um, Mr Talbot's just gone through everything really thoroughly. Um, there was an appeal on a previous application which was larger than this one. Three things were the reasons for refusal. Two of them were, dis were, support sorry, were dismissed by the inspector. The only one that was uh, upheld by the inspector was uh, the size of the extension. The size of the extension has been reduced and the size of the extension is now acceptable to planning officers. So your experts are saying that this is an acceptable extension. If it went to appeal, I mean, I would go a bit further than, they, than uh, Mr Talbot can. I would say you would probably lose the appeal. And I appreciate it's not likely to cause any costs or anything like that, but it's unfair on the applicant who has tried his best or her best uh, to deal with all the pre previous objections, all the previous issues, and has come up with what our planning officers consider to be an acceptable solution. Uh, and I can see no planning reasons for refusal, so I think you know we, we would be high bound to, to lose on appeal. Thank you, Chair. 
Thank you, Councillor Glenn. But as you say, we've all got us different opinions, aren't we, Susan? Thank you. Right. Chair, do you wish to go to the vote now? Yeah, it's a name voting. Sorry, it? Chair. I've just my my apologies, Chair. I, I have put in the right to speak again. I, I appreciate we are coming to the end of the debate. If you just allow me thirty seconds. Of course, I can, Councillor Arbour. No problem. Yeah. Uh, Chair, I, I, I'd like I'd, I appreciate the remarks you made about my experience on this planning committee, but I must stress, and I'm sure colleagues are aware of this, that I am no expert. Uh, I'm just as efficient as, if you like, as other colleagues on here. And uh, if you like, it's the planners who are the experts. But in my opinion, again, and I will state it again, HS5 covers my objections, if you like. So each, you know, you've said it yourself, each individual member will make their own mind up. But I don't want members thinking that I'm coming, sitting here, and I'm coming from a view that I'm the expert. I'm not. Thank you, Chair. No, Councillor Harbour, just to put you straight on that, what I was coming across as, you've been on many a committee, you've seen many applications, and no doubt you've seen applications right this it passed. I'm not saying you were a builder, I'm not saying you were a builder's opinion, and I know our officers are there to do a council duty, I understand that. I was just saying, in respect to you, all the committees you've sat on, and you would know. Move to the vote. Get moved to vote, please. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Anwar? Four. Councillor Bertelsall? Against. Councillor Kant? Four. Councillor Chowdhury? Four. Councillor Emo? Against. Councillor Fewings? Four. Councillor Graham? Councillor Graham. Sorry, I forgot to unmute. Four. Thank you. Councillor Harbour. Against. Councillor Hoster. Absent. Councillor Johnston. Four. Councillor Lishman. Against. Councillor Payne. Four. Councillor Rajah. Councillor Roger. Four. Thank you. Councillor Sumner. Councillor Sumner. Councillor Sumner still with us, Alison? Uh, yes, he is. Councillor Sumner, can you unmute your microphone? How's that? That's better, thank you. Right. Thank you. Yes, I'm, I'm following the officer's recommendation for approval. Thank you. Thank you. The application is approved. Thank you, Imelda. The next one is uh, confirmation of the confirmation of the tree preservation order. you've got the uh, before that you've got the uh, scheme uh, decisions taken under the scheme of delegation they are just for noting but do member have any questions yeah sorry about that any questions members move it councillor fewings has indicated that he would like to speak I, th I, I think that might be on the delegated items right okay Councillor Fewings. Uh, thanks, Chair. I, I just want to uh, make the comment, and I have sent this through in, in writing, um, that we seem to be happy with um, lots of new advertising um, coming in with uh, fluorescent screens and no um, limitation on uh, times. And I think in particular in relation to the um, McDonald's fast food burger restaurant, on Burnham Gate, um, it's actually right next to a residential area and they're getting a number of screens and a digital booth um, and there's nothing here to, to tell us that there's going to be any um, any restrictions on that being through the night um, and they already suffer quite a lot of noise and light pollution from this establishment and I, I would have liked to have seen this um, 
you know, come to committee, basically. Thank you, Councillor Fewins. And if Sal Smelder? There's nobody else wishing to speak, Chair. Okay, then. What do you want to do with this one? Go the preservation order, Chair. Right, okay. Then. Can we carry on with that one, Melda, then? A preservation? Pre preservation order. It's uh, Janet Philbin presenting this report. Thank you. Uh, Chair, I do not um, intend to do a presentation on this. Um, there's nothing further to add to the agenda, but uh, what we do have for you is two photographs, one of T1 and one of T2, and those will be displayed for you now. That's, T, that's T1, which is an oak tree, the smaller of the two oak trees. And then the second one, T2, uh, is the larger of the two oak trees. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Chair. All right, Imelda. Yeah, well, um, does any member wish to speak on this item? Move it, yeah, Chair. I would like to move, I would like to move the tree preservation been moved orders and seconded by Councillor Johnson. And seconded by Councillor Chowdhury. So I'll go to the vote, yes. Please, Imelda. Thank you. Councillor Imelda. Yes. Imelda, I did express an RTS. Huh? Sorry. Oh, sorry. sorry, I'll pass you back to the chair. <laughs> okay. Go on, Imelda. Can I just apologise, yeah. Councillor Graham? I was displaying my screen, so I, yeah. I had the photos up and I didn't see that. Apologies. Yeah. It's all right. also, Councillor Fewings wishes to speak as well. Right, right. who's first in the elder? Councillor Graham. Ladies first. Okay. Is it Councillor Graham then, yeah? Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, I remember this issue arising because of a previous application in that area and we felt at the time that it was really important that these two trees be preserved and you can see from the pictures uh, one is a particularly fine example and um, I would wish that these two trees um, have a tree preservation mm -hmm. order on them. Thank you Chair. Thank you Councillor Graham. Councillor Fewings. Uh, thank you, Chair. I literally just wanted to say exactly that and to uh, propose it and second it, but obviously that's been done by others. So, yeah, thank you. Imelda, can we have a vote on this, please? Yes, uh, yes, Chair. Okay, Councillor Anwar. Four. Thank you. Kurt Russell. Four. Thank you. Councillor Kant. Four. <clears throat> Councillor Chowdhury. Four. Councillor Emo. Four. Councillor Fewings. Four. Councillor Graham. Four. Councillor Harbour. Four. Councillor Ho Hosker. Four. Councillor Johnston. Four. Councillor Lishman. Four. Councillor Payne. Four. Councillor Raja. Four. Councillor Sumner. Four. Thank you, Councillor Sumner. That's approved, Chair. Yeah, we should have that one for them. It's just something we've all agreed on something. All right, thank you. Yeah, I think that is the end of the meeting. Would you like to close the meeting? I would. I'd just like to thank members for the attendance tonight and uh, wish you, well, you heard your mind. So thank you very much for tonight and I close the meeting. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Chair.
Thank you. Bye. Bye. See you later, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. -bye.